I'm a sucker for cute mascot platformers, and Banjo is no exception. He and his pal Kazooie made their way to the N64 in 1998. But we aren't here to talk about the games, for the most part. We're here to discuss the merchandise this franchise has to offer. Despite not having a true third game, Banjo and Kazooie have gathered quite a few pieces of merch this year. Not to mention their debut in Smash, it's big and rare to create a new Banjo-Kazooie game. Anyway, let's dive into the world of Banjo-Kazooie merchandise. <laughs> Banjo didn't star in his own game at first. He was a racer in Diddy Kong Racing in 1997, alongside Conker and a few others. Diddy, Banjo, and Wizpig got action figures sporting the Diddy Kong Racing theme. Looking at Banjo, he's got a car that can, in fact, shoot a missile. If you pull back the car, it'll ride across a hard floor and shoot the missile. The figure itself is highly articulated. You can bend his arms, elbows, ankles, twist his head, legs, feet, hands, and arms. That's a lot of points of articulation if I say so myself. You can find them easily around $60, loose, with car. But in package, we'll round to 100 or more. These figures did release in 1999, two years after the game's release. During E3 of 97, they were giving away small Banjo-Kazooie standees to promote the game. I'm not sure if these were prizes or just freebies, but it's a nice little display piece that fit right at home in an N64 collection. Same with this E3 Team T-shirt featuring the old Banjo-Kazooie logo. You can only imagine how rare this item is since you had to be a rare, rare employee to obtain it. This E3 was actually documented on a German-exclusive VHS tape featuring all the new games of that year. Why is it German-exclusive is beyond me. Through an Nintendo Power subscription, you can get exclusive VHS tapes, like this Banjo-Kazooie one. Other games like Star Fox 64, Diddy Kong Racing, and Majora's Mask got them too. This was how gamers back in the day got their monthly gaming news. Inside the box, you'd get the VHS tape itself, along with an ad for Nintendo Power. While on the subject of boxes, Target had exclusive pre-order boxes for, of course, Banjo-Kazooie, but also Ocarina of Time, DK64, and even Glover. I love these little exclusives. They're a little extra, I think, but so worth it. It's an investment. Banjo's box contains an exclusive t-shirt and coupon to Target. The shirt is kind of basic with Kazooie's footprints on the front and the duo on the back. Still not a bad little bonus. Inside one of the Nintendo Power magazines, you'll find a poster advertising Banjo-Kazooie. The level they're in is reminiscent to the old Banjo demo, which you can see a photo of in the finished game. But the cream of the crop for Banjo fans are these B&A plushes of Mumbo and Banjo in both plush and keychain form. They're easy to find, but it's expensive, depending on condition. Mumbo can easily sell for 30, while Banjo can round to 50 or 80. The keychain, anyway. The main plush is about $1 to $200, but I think with Banjo's debut in Smash, they've skyrocketed to about $500 max. Back then, Mumbo was mighty expensive being beside Banjo at $100 or more, but he's lost value somehow. Poor Mumbo, he needs more love. These were sold at select retail stores such as EB Games, and they'd sit nicely in these display boxes. However, none of these plushes can compare to Tootie. She's a Japanese exclusive plush by Takara, and it's hard to find at a decent price. This plush was either won from a UFO catcher, or purchased at a retail store. Alongside Tootie, Takara also made Banjo, which seems to come in a bag, or the collector is taking precautionary measures. Both of them have size variants as seen in this fan's impressive Banjo collection. There's a keychain variant for Banjo, but not Tootie from what we see. She could have a keychain variant, it's just rare. In Germany, there was this magazine called Endzone, and some came with tips and trick cards, featuring Banjo-Kazooie, Pokemon Snap, Forsaken, and FIFA 98. The tips are in German, but the cards do feature some cool artwork. Remember that E3 freebie? 
It got a big brother. All Link's just Banjo-Kazooie with a yellow lining. This was most likely displayed at EV Games to promote the game. Walmart even promoted the game with this poster that says, One bear, one bird, one wild adventure. With this kind of marketing, I'd be sold on Banjo-Kazooie. But as a kid, I grew up with the top dog, Super Mario 64. However, Banjo kept on making sales and posters. I don't know if this one was from a magazine or displayed at a store, since it doesn't have a logo to indicate that. But still a cool render that is sure to catch the eyes that see it. This next one is from that German magazine called Endzone, with Forsaken on the back. Another nice render, but there's actually a variant of this poster. It appears to have some kind of negative effect with the mumbo token on the bottom left, and some text I can't read. Kinda odd. What makes this next poster odd is that it almost resembles Mario 64 with Mario flying. It shouldn't surprise me or anyone since these two games released in the same year. The final poster to show off is this Greatest Duo Ever poster with Banjo, Kazooie, and Mumbo. Maybe it should have been Trio. Anyway, I see where my friend got inspiration for the duo concept for Snowy and Andy. Well played! I never worked at a game store, but most of the time I'd see pins or buttons of the latest titles on their lanyards. This Begin Your Adventure Today button was most likely worn to promote the game in hopes of making sales. The same may go for this one too. I can imagine Walmart employees wearing this as I have seen them wear game buttons before. These, on the other hand, were likely sold on a card since some pins are sold in bunches of four. It's a nice set with each character on an individual pin. Gruntilda even makes an appearance on the set. The last pin is of Banjo and Kazooie. From what I gathered, it's a promo item you can get at a con or some other event. Regardless of the case, these pins aren't cheap anymore. Now this next item is pretty odd, but of all the merch Banjo can get, he got a temporary tattoo don't use it, my friends. Keep it sealed. Keep it safe. Where and how you got this is unknown, but I bet it was an E3 freebie of some sorts. If you wanted to be cool in the 90s, then you would ride this Banjo Kazooie skateboard across your neighborhood, making everyone jealous. Heck, to this day, if you owned it, you'd still make others jealous. This is a rare item that was purchased at a store called Ames that went out of business in the late 90s. It's a shame this port is faded, but you can still see the old logo, the jungle scenery, and renders of Banjo, Kazooie, and Mumbo. There's also a Zelda version, but let's not get off topic. Japan has some exclusive merch too, like this Swatch Watch. It's a real nice looking watch, with Banjo flying in the center. To complement the watch, you have this Japanese exclusive t-shirt. It's a promo item you got an event like a con, or it could have been a pre-order bonus. The US also got a promo t-shirt. Yes, another, another one. one. I honestly preferred this one over the t-shirt in the Target box. To store your miscellaneous Banjo-Kazooie items, you can use these launch boxes or pencil cases that come in blue and green variants. How you got these is beyond me probably available in retail stores for a limited time, along with these and 64 storage boxes. I vaguely remember seeing items like these in stores for you to keep your N64 cartridges in. But why throw away the box? Really? Why? Anyway, Nintendo Power, Prima, and Brady Games publish guides for the game, each giving out tips and tricks in their own way. Take your pick, either way you're getting a piece of history. Japan also has a guide for Banjo-Kazooie, known as Banjo-Kazooie no Daibuken, The Great Adventure. I don't know who published it, the name is in Japanese it seems. This curious little item oddly looks like the Gex Best Buy book, so I assume this too was a Best Buy exclusive. Actually, it looks like the book is in German, and it came with an exclusive poster. I wonder if the Gex book had one. Moving on, we've got a 16 page fun book with coloring pages, puzzles, a maze, quest, secret message, a spot, the difference game, and more. It's essentially an activity book for the European region, geared towards kids, obviously. There's a video of it if you wish to see what's inside. If the game's soundtrack is a hit, it's sure to get a CD, and Banjo-Kazooie got two versions, one on store shelves, and one promo CD that came with a free t-shirt. Hang on, that one last promo shirt I showed may be the one you get here. Nice! Japan got its copy of the soundtrack too. 
Not sure if they're any different other than the art and language. They've covered a lot, but there's more to be had in the sequel. With the success of Banjo-Kazooie, Rareware made Banjo-Tooie, and it was critically acclaimed, much like its predecessor. There was going to be a third Banjo game, but we all know how that turned out. Before we tackle that, let's see what merch Banjo-Tooie has to offer. First and foremost, strategy guides were in order, as many players would find themselves stumped without the help of a guide. This was way before Let's Plays and Walkthroughs were made, my friends. Once again, Nintendo Power, Prima, and Brady Games are at it again with publishing them. But this time, in Japan, we've got a publisher name! MyCom Mook. At least for the green variant, unless that's the front or the back of the book. Aside from a guide, Japan got a storybook. Is it an actual book? A light novel? A manga? Oh man, wouldn't that be cool! Speaking of cool, this display standee makes the old one look bland. This one actually has vibrant colors and life in it. The colors pop out, making it an eye catcher. Other eye catchers are posters. This one here looks like it was plastered onto a game store window or a wall for the customers to see. It's reminiscent to the standee we just saw earlier with the same character models and background. To change things up, we've got a German poster with Pokemon Gold and Silver on the back. This one was in a magazine, but I'm not sure which one as it doesn't say. It's the size of a book, unlike this next one here that's taken up nearly the entire wall. Sadly, some boxes are obscuring us from seeing the rest of the poster, but it's basically the cover of the Brady Games Guide. This next one is also huge and different from the others. It's got a new render of Banjo and Kazooie with the Nintendo 64 text slightly faded on the right side. This last one is more of an ad than a poster, with text explaining the game's new features. Still really cool though. Much like its prequel, it got N64 cart cases with Banjo and Mumbo. Did anyone ever use these back then? I never saw the need of owning them. Anyway, the last item is the CD soundtrack of the game. You have all the tracks from Banjo Tooie, including some nice artwork. Since the franchise was still hot, THQ released Banjo onto the GBA. Grunty's Revenge, and Banjo Pilot. While they were not terrible, it just wasn't what the Banjo-Kazooie fans were looking for. Inside Grunty's Revenge, you got a free poster of the box's cover art. It's small, allowing other posters to join in. Now we're going into an era many Banjo fans are proud of. The Microsoft era. <laughs> Released onto the Xbox 360, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, published by Microsoft this time, but it was still developed by Rare. Got moderately positive reviews, despite it being different from the original Banjo formula. Heck, even the duo got a new makeover. While I prefer the old design, this one isn't that bad. But before I get off topic, the game got a sponsorship with Lunchables to create cardboard vehicles. I remember when these were out and about, but I was never really interested into them. Still an interesting promo, but it pales in comparison to this neat wrench. I think this was given out E3 or as a pre-order bonus. Regardless, this is a cool item, but is it better than this plush of banjo? This is a German exclusive. You got it at a convention in Germany. How? Probably as a prize or purchased it at a booth. But as of now, this is a rare and expensive item according to the previous listing. It didn't sell, but putting a price tag on something like this is hard. The next item is, of course, the soundtrack. Surprise, surprise! Every Banjo game, sadly except for the GBA games, needs a CD. It isn't that expensive or rare compared to the others, but still a nice thing to own for a Banjo collection. Published by Prima alone this time, you've got a strategy guide for the game. Inside the guide, you've got an exclusive poster. Or maybe it was from the game. I don't remember. Anyway, the last item for the game is an ad saying, If you can dream it, you can build it. With limitations, of course. But after Nuts and Bolts, we wouldn't hear of Banjo or his pal Kazooie until 2015. In 
It's E3 of 2015. Uncharted 4 and Rise of Tomb Raider were announced along with another Call of Duty game. A teaser of the Final Fantasy VII remake and Rare Replay which includes the games of Banjo-Kazooie, Battletoads, and Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. Many were stoked to hear that a bunch of expensive games are coming out to one disc. And what comes with the new game? Merch! Duh! During E3, you can get a free Banjo Hand or Battletoads Fist by participating in playing a demo of the game. Just like Star Fox Zero, where you got a pin after playing a short demo INSIDE OF FREAKING ORWING! WOW! Now these freebies are being sold on eBay for $30! Hooray! Scalpers! At San Diego Comic Con, however, you can win a backpack with the Banjo Kazooie logo plastered onto it, holding a bunch of rare items. Pun entirely intended. Outside the backpack and two stickers, that's all Banjo got. Regardless, this backpack and its goodies are sought after by collectors. And oh, dare I say, good luck! Seriously, a thousand dollars is ridiculous! Keeping the rare theme, we've got a set of pins featuring Banjo, Conquer, Battletoads, Perfect Dark, Viva Pinata, and Blast Corpse. It's a nice little set for all the rareware fans out there. The rarity and price for this set is unknown, however. Along with this coin that comes in gold and silver, it has the Banjo Kazooie logo on the front with the duo, and the rare logo on the back, the text saying, inspiring everyone to play together. Ironically, the game is single player. Moving on, first four figures a company collector should be familiar about sculpted and painted an incredible Banjo Kazooie statue. Any statue from first four figures ain't cheap and are usually scalped when the company releases them into their store. But before I go on a rant, let's move on to the Loot Crate exclusive items. There's this license plate celebrating 20 years of the franchise. Ugh, these videos need to stop making me feel old! Anyway, it'd be really cool if you could slap this bad boy on the back or front of your car, but I doubt that'd be legal, so don't do that. The last exclusive item is this poster of the box art. Kinda lame, but it's not bad. I'd much rather get this in my loot gaming box than some cheap throwaway. The store I am 8 bit also has exclusive banjo swag, including some pens of Banjo Kazooie. Sorry, no Mumbo or Tootie. They're nice quality pens that'd be right at home with other gaming pens, but those pale in comparison to this record. Yep, this is a licensed item. I guess this is what the Banjo Kazooie live action would look like. Feel free to insert your Sonic movie jokes in the comments. The vinyl features all the songs from the game. If you have a record player lying around, this would be a nice purchase. I wonder how it's in vinyl. For those who can't afford the Diddy Kong Racing Banjo figure, fear not as there is an affordable alternative through Totaku. Though this figure is being scalped too. STOP IT ALREADY! Despite it not being posable, it's a nice looking figure and the pose it has is already good. I love our bear friend rocking that banjo with Kazooie looking like she's having fun. I'd say this plush is an affordable alternative to the BDNA banjo, but uh yeah, scalpers are at it again! Stubbins is a series of video game plushes in chibi form. I seriously hope more obscure characters will get a plush. No, not you, Bubsy! Anyway, this banjo plush may look odd at first. But it's grown on to me ever since I got one myself. Yes, I was able to salvage one at my local GameStop. Funny story, I saw him and decided not to get him at first so I kinda hid him among other plushes. When I found out his worth, I went back after a week and I was on edge thinking someone bought it. But no, it was still at the same spot. Just like Soccer Kid, this Banjo plush was meant for me. He may not be as cool as the BDNA plush, but it's still Banjo and I love it. This guy was made this year, so maybe, just maybe, there will be more Banjo-Kazooie merch to offer. And I'm not wrong, with Banjo-Kazooie's appearance in Smash, Exquisite Gaming is creating a Banjo-Kazooie statue that will most likely hold a controller for you like their other statues. This is the only photo thus far, but it looks nice. Wanna know what's nicer though? Fan Gamer teased a new plush of Banjo and Kazooie as a set not sewn together. This is a first! I am stoked to see the finished product. 
In the meantime, up for pre-order are these pins and t-shirts. I highly recommend you check out Fan Gamer. You can find rather cool gaming merch that is officially licensed. Sadly though, that is it. For now. But I'm sure there will be more to come in the near future. Especially with Banjo-Kazooie appearing at Smash. Be expecting an amiibo. I know I may have missed some Banjo-Kazooie items, but I think we covered the majority. Collecting for the franchise must be a real pain in the butt because most of these items are expensive. But of course you have scalpers to thank for that. Thanks, guys! But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If or when new Banjo merch comes out, I'll be sure to cover that. At least, until there's like a bulk. Much like this video. But probably not like this long because jeez louise. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe if you wish to see more merch videos, because I do that too. And be sure to check out other people like Pat Mac, Bad Neck Mechanic, and a few others that I may be forgetting. Oh yeah, Nightram56. He's a great guy. But anyway, stay tuned for more necessary nonsense from yours truly, Gaming Chili Hedgehog. God bless, I'll see you in the next video, out with the aim! Thank you.